Hi and welcome to Reseller News. My name is Rich Bassini. Today is October 24, 2018. Thank you for tuning in. And I also want to say thank you to the new subscribers who subscribed to my channel recently. It is greatly appreciated. Thank you so much. Today's topic I want to talk about online sales tax. It's a topic that people may not want to discuss or they don't want to deal with it right now, but it is something important. And I got a couple of windows opened up. Um, I recently downloaded a guide from uh, Alvara, Alvara, I believe it is, it's a tax company. And I just want to go over some of the information with you guys. Now, mind you, the information I'm providing, I am not a tax consultant, a CPA. <laughs> so whatever I'm sharing with you is just based off the knowledge I'm reading from other websites and so on and so forth. So, um, you know, by all means, if you have a, a CPA or a tax consultant, you know, an attorney, whatever, that, that deals with taxes, specializes in it, um, check with them. I'm just sharing information with you guys out there. It, it's an important topic, um, and I think it's, it's something that needs to be dealt with, and we, you know, I think it's something that should be you know, talked about. Um, I just want to say one thing in regards to uh, the issue with taxes, and I just want to bring this up before I start getting into the other uh, areas of uh, tax, online sales tax. Thinking about it and reading about it prior to making this video, I think that in some cases, now don't quote me on this and hold me to this, but I think as time goes on, once this gets fully implemented, I mean, it's in full swing operation, <clears throat> I think what's going to happen is uh, I think you're going to see somewhat a decline in sales. And the reason why I say that uh, is for, for, for argument's sake is right now I have checked off on my eBay um, for the online sales tax collector for New York right now at this time. Um, however, there's going to be other ones that's going to be added. eBay is going to be adding them as time goes on. There's three of them coming up, and I'm going to point that out in this video. But what I'm, the reason I'm saying that is um, it, where it could cause a drop in sales is because I'm in the state of New York. Now, New York, I think, is 8.75 or something along that line. The taxes are not super cheap here, to be honest with you. I mean, you know, living in New York is not the most cheapest place to live, to be honest with you, just in general, let alone the taxes you pay when you go into department stores or whatever. And depending on the cost of the item, now if the item is a pretty expensive item you're selling and a person's going to pay, let's say it's an item, I'm using, I'm just drawing this number out there, I'm just giving you a for example. Let's say the item, I'm selling something, on a, a vintage piece, I don't know, electronics, whatever it may be, and the item's $100, okay? I, I'm not sure about the computations on here if I'm calculating the tax, right? but I'm just drawing a number out there. And let's say with the tax on there, I don't know, for $100 item, maybe let's say it comes out to be maybe $8 or $9, I'm just using as an example. You may get a buyer, let's say the buyer is a New York buyer. He may search around for that particular item you're selling in a state that's not collecting sales tax. I'm talking about before this gets fully integrated into our eBay system. They may, I, and this is, I'm speaking this from my behalf because I know myself, I too would like to save money. I would go to another buyer and where I could save on the taxes. Today, it's all about saving, folks. Let's, let's face the facts. It's all about saving money. So I believe that in some cases, not all, that that can hurt sales to some point. I mean, you know, right now, I don't get too many uh, New York sellers, you know, or buyers. Uh, I mean, I get them. I have a folder, especially a, a folder put aside for all the New York um, sales I make eBay and I keep it in a folder and then tax time comes around I got to go through them verbatim or put them on my spreadsheet which that's what they're supposed to be doing and at the end of tax time uh, computate all the sales I made in New York and send it off to New York Department of Taxation but I'm saying right now is I think in some cases I'm not saying that's what's causing a slack in sales I mean it's it's been dead I mean you could read the down detector you can go to the eBay community and you're going to hear people, you know, in some cases, they're going to be voicing their opinions and concerns and issues saying how slow it is with eBay sales. They're not making sales. Some people ain't making enough money to pay their insertion fees. So let alone making enough money to pay their sales tax. You know, I mean, are you supposed to be collecting that, putting that money on the side, of course, but I'm just trying to say, but there are thresholds, okay? And I, like I said, I'm going to go into the uh, screen in a minute I got different windows opened up there, and we're going to go over, expand a little on it. But I think it's a topic that, that should be dealt with and should be talked about. Because um, it's going to affect, how it's going to affect us is another story. 
okay? Uh, in some cases, it may be more confusing and time-consuming to process all the paperwork and send things off to other, you know, different tax jurisdictions and stuff like that. I think it's going to be more of a hassle than, than what it's worth. My take on it, and I don't, I'm just one man speaking this here, my own my own piece is uh, my own peace of mind, so to speak, here. But I think it would have been more simplified. Okay, it would be more simplified. I have no problem with paying taxes. Gospel truth. That's 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 your obligation. You make sales, you got to pay taxes on them. Okay. Uh, that goes to state and federal, of course. Uh, whatever your income is, you know, if you're doing this as a full time income and you make an X amount of money, you got to pay taxes on it. Plain and simple. My take is, I think it would be more simplified. If the government could do it, it could regulate it this way, whatever state you're in, okay. If you live in the state of New York, plain and simple, it's a very simple thing. There's, there's no rocket science to this here. You live in the state of New York. That's your nexus. That's where your place of business is. You don't have any other locations but New York. You're in basically you're based in New York. This is where all the work is done. All, all your business is transacted is in the state of New York. When you get New York buyers buying from you you collect that sales tax from the buyer from the purchases made by the new york buyers put it to the side tax time comes around pay the department of tax in new york department of taxation and finance so simplified it'd be so simple lock stock and barrel it'd be easy less stress on the sellers because if you got to start collecting sales tax in different areas in different states and sending it to different jurisdictions that's going to be a lot of work I can't afford a CPA, okay? I can't afford a CPA. I'm telling you right up front, I can't. Um, so people say, well, you could try attempting to do it yourself. I would have to. <laughs> if I'm not making enough sales, if I'm, making, if I'm not bringing enough money in from, from uh, eBay, how am I going to hire How am I gonna hire a CPA? You know what I'm saying? That's how slow sales are. Um, right now, what are we? We're on the 24th. This, what, another another five, six more days, seven more days, and this, this month is over. Okay, so, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a serious thing we're talking about here, folks. But I want to go over the thresholds with you. I'm going to go into the window. I'm going to open up some windows over here. And I just want to talk a little about and expand on some of it. If you guys have any comments, you want to leave comments, that's fine. If you don't, that's fine, too. However, what I'm, what I'm telling you in, these, in this video here is, this is I'm not giving you advice. I'm just sharing what I read. Okay, I, like I said again, I will repeat it. I am not a tax consultant or a CPA. I'm just sharing what I what I read from different websites, and I just want to share the information with you. What you do with it is totally up to you. But for the most part, I highly recommend you do your own research. If you have a CPA or a tax consultant, whatever, definitely talk to them about this here. Let them know what you're doing. I'm sure they know about all the new rule, rules and regulations, all the changes that's taken place with e-commerce and online selling. Uh, I'm sure they know all about that stuff, I would hope. Um, but if not, then you might want to get a CPA that's that, or a business CPA, whatever, it's somebody that deals with online business or just business in general, you know. But uh, I, right now, like I said, at the point at this stage in the game, I can't afford a CPA. So I'm going to have to learn on my own, uh, ask questions, talk to people that are involved in with, that deal with taxes and see if they can give me uh, aid and assistance when that time comes. But let's get to it. Let me bump out of here. And I'm going to go over here. Now, the first one that I came to is, um, this is from Alavara, uh, no, Aval, Aval, Valara, uh, com. <laughs> I can't say the word. Um, and they had a guide here that they printed out that I could print out. I already registered with them. They had to, you know, give my information, phone number, and all that stuff. So I save you guys the trouble in regards to doing that. There, you could do it yourself, but uh, you know, I figured let me share it with you. <clears throat> it goes over here. The title is over here. What the South Dakota versus Wayfair Incorporated decision mean uh, may mean for your business. Understanding economic uh, nexus. Now, <clears throat> when you go down here, you read a little about it. It says understanding where your company has a nexus is an internal part integral part of your sales tax compliance strategy because nexus dictates where your business is required to collect collect and remit tax there are a lot of business activities that can cause your business to have a nexus but one is getting a lot of attention from states right now because it is a for, it was at the forefront 
of the Supreme Court of the United States. <clears throat> Excuse me, folks. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry about that. Getting a little dry cough here. Um, it says it goes over here, but it was uh, not getting a lot of attention from the states. It was for the uh, at the forefront of the Supreme Court of the United States, uh, South Dakota versus Wayfair Incorporated, whatever, and the economic nexus. Now, <clears throat> it says over here to start, let's define the concept of nexus. Sales tax nexus is a connection between a seller and a state that requires the seller to collect and remit tax on sales made in that state. Historically, nexus was based on a physical presence. After the Wayfair decision, nexus can now also be established based on economic activity. If you have sales tax nexus in California and Texas, for example, you must collect and remit sales tax in California and Texas. Unfortunately, you just can't figure out where you have the nexus today and forget about it. You must closely monitor the nexus on an ongoing basis because it is constantly changing and the business activities that can trigger a nexus and can vary from state to state. Now, they got a map over here. These are the two states right now they're referring to. You can see here, Texas and California. Okay. Now, <clears throat> what I understand with the nexus, all right, I was listening to some other sellers out there on uh, YouTube talking about this here. And I had a wrote it down. I have a loose leaf over here. I write down information. I take notes on this stuff before I even get involved with it. But I'll expand a little on that as we go along. Now, um, it goes on to say, I'm not going to read this whole thing, folks. Um, I'm going to give you the site where you could download this and you could read it yourself. And I, I highly recommend you do take the time to read this here. Okay, really, you, you should read this for yourself because it's important. Okay, and if there are people out there that, you know, <laughs> Um, you know, have different ideas about how they're going to collect sales tax, when and how. If you're not familiar with it, you definitely might want to, again, consult a tax, you know, a, a CPA that deals with this stuff, okay? But I'm not going to read all of this here because I'll get tongue-tied and talking. I got other windows, as you can see on top there. I want to just expand all on each one. Each, now, here's the thing. They all have thresholds, okay? Now, what you see here states with economic nexus laws okay as of october this month 2018 okay this is not old news although the things i'm going to be talking about do date back to i think the 16th and 2017. so this is in, this has been in the progress it's been in it's been in the works before okay we're talking about this a while back so it's not something new like oh i'm surprised you know but when you click on um these states here that are highlighted in blue it's going to give you a list okay now a lot of these things are in effect between the 16th, the 17th, and the 18th, right? Let me see. Um, is there anything for the 16th? All right. All right. But these particular ones here are, from, I'm sorry, did I say 16th? I meant to say uh, the 19th, 18th, and 17th, okay? Now, each one, let's just start with North Dakota, the first one. Effective date, October 1st, 2018. Included transactions, okay? Gross sales from a sale of a tangible personal property and other taxable items delivered into the state taxable services are not included okay treatment of exempt transaction exempt sales and and say and services are not included in the threshold count trigger okay this is what's going to trigger a sales or a transaction volume sales transaction threshold a hundred thousand or two hundred transactions other thresholds other threshold applies to a previous or current calendar year. So the way I understand it, again, I am not a tax uh, a CPA. The way I understand it is if you did this much money, uh, you made this much money in sales the previous year, you're gonna most likely have to pay tax on that there. Again, you're gonna have to look into this yourself, okay? Now, this effective date is uh, October 1st, 2018. Now, I could tell you right to boot, I had no, first of all, if I did any transaction out in North Dakota, <laughs> I did not meet this threshold at all. I wish I could. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you, the way sales have been. Um, I don't, now, now here's the thing. You say, well, okay, suppose you only sold five items within that calendar year. Do you still have to pay for it? 
That's the question that a lot of people probably want to know. I would think, and again, I would check. I would think, this is my personal take on it, that if you made sales in that state, like let's say North Dakota, uh, would you collect sales on that? I don't know. It depends on how much the item was. Did you sell a $2 item? Did you sell a $3 item? Yeah, let's say the sale, let's say you made a total of sales for that, for that state. Let's say, I don't know, let's say 5 or $10. Do you still have to file for that? I would think maybe yes, but again, I would think absolutely. Then, then there's also a flip side to it. If you didn't meet the threshold and your sales were that low, where you only, let's say, you made $10 in sales from that particular state, I would think if you didn't meet the threshold, if you didn't, if you didn't meet it, then you wouldn't have to pay for it. But then again, that is something that you need to talk to uh, a tax per a person about that. Okay, I would think personally that if you made sales in that state that you know you would have to i'm totally wrong and if there's anybody out there that's more fluent in this here that has more knowledge about this i'm just sharing this information with you okay don't take my word for it okay that's why i'm bringing this up and showing you guys this here i would think if you do it in the threat if you, you you definitely if you are in that threshold and you make that kind of money that's a given that's that's a no-brainer okay but as far as like other things like if you made small sales and you're right under that cusp or Let's say you only let's say you did do a lot of stuff in North Dakota and you made five thousand dollars. You know, they still may want it. I don't know. I would definitely what I would do, here's what I would do. I would check with my attorney, or attorney, a tax person, a CPA, and say, look, this is what the sales threshold is for that count for that state. I only made, let's say, five thousand dollars in total sales. Am I still required to pay the sales tax and see what the tax what the uh, your CPA tells you? Or better yet, you could contact, you know, whatever. You could do a little more research if you wanted to call up, you know, North Dakota, contact them. But, I mean, that'd be a little crazy because, you know, that's something you could do, you know, have your CPA help you out with. But if you look at the thresholds on some of these, let me just move this down here. Um, a lot of it is uh, this particular one here for South Carolina is 100,000. They don't have or 200 uh, transactions. All right. Sales only. Okay. This says sales or transaction volume. All right. Now, this one came out, South Dakota, November 1st, 2018. Okay. Sales of tangible personal property, electronically delivered products or services into the state. Treatment of the exempt transactions, exempt sales, and exempt services are included in that threshold count. Now, this is theirs for sales and transactions, South Dakota. 100,000, same thing, 200 transactions. All right. And the threshold applies to the previous or current calendar year. Okay. So it's pretty much telling you right there and then. And they got other breakdowns of others. This is going to be effective January 19th, uh, 20, January 1st, 2019. Okay. Same thing with the thresholds. You can see, it seems like that right along here. I don't know if there's any more to have different thresholds. Let's see. Now, Washington for B&Q or B&O tax, whatever. This came out for July 1st, 2017. Gross receipts attributed to the state taxable services are included in the threshold count. Okay. Exempt sales are included, but exempt services are not included. Okay. Here, it goes on to say that sales and transaction threshold is sales of more than $267,000 yearly gross receipts or attribute to Washington in 2017. 285,000 in 2018 or at least 25% of the total yearly gross receipts sourced or attributed to Washington in 2017 or 2018. Other B&O threshold applies in the current or prior year. And it goes on. Okay. But if you look at the thresholds, they're pretty much the same as sort of the one I just read. Okay. But again, folks, I am not, like I said again, I am not a person that's familiar with the law, tax laws. You're definitely going to need to check with your uh, tax consultants, you know, people that deal with this here. Okay, your CPAs, whatever. All right. Uh, let's see here. I just want to see if there was anything else over here. Um, there was something I wanted to share with you guys. Okay, let me just read this over here, this important note here. I don't think I've read this. If I did, I'm, if I didn't, I'm sorry. Let me just read this important notice really quick. 
This document explains economic ne uh, nexus, which is that which, which is what the Supreme Court authorized in South Dakota versus Wayfair Inc. However, are many other types of nexus triggers. According to SCOTUS, South Dakota law affords small merchants a reasonable degree of protection, in part because it requires a merchant to collect sales tax only if it does a considerable amount of business in that state. It ensures no obligation to remit sales tax may be applied retroactively. Okay, so in other words, what they're saying here, from what I understand, they're not going to go back a year or two years uh, and you know go after you for that and say, oh, you collected so much money back in those years. That's the way I'm interpreting it. Now, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Okay, but it says it right here in this important notice, folks. It ensures no obligation to remit sales tax may be applied retroactively. Okay, it ensures no obligation to remit sales tax may be applied at retroactively. That's the way I understand it. Now, if I'm wrong, correct me. Then it goes on to say South Dakota is a member of the streamlined sales and use tax agreement and has taken steps to simplify compliances and reduce costs for businesses. And then if you read over here, there's some more t text you could read. Um, I, I'm not going to read all this here. Like I said, I'm not, it's kind of a lot if you really think about it, if you want to get the full, you know, the full spectrum of it here. I'm not going to go all into this here. You can see you got, you know, basically it's talking about other stuff here. Um, well, this one over here, how should remote sellers go about determining whether they have a nexus in South Dakota or other states? Again, you could read this here. Okay, you could follow up on it, do more research on your own. I'm just trying to, you know, enlighten you guys out there for us online sellers. Okay, this is something you might want to check into. Okay, but uh, you could download this yourself too. Okay, but you go to www.alvalara.com. That's the uh, website, and you could check more into this here. Now, here's one that came out in 2017. This is from e-commerce bytes. You guys know I love this here. Um, buyers think sales tax on eBay is a scam. Now, this is not me saying it. This is what the, somebody said it. I know this is uh, last year's, but like I always say, folks, sometimes old news is good news. It goes on to say here, now, Dear Einer is the one who founded this uh, e-commerce bytes, I believe. Okay, Dear Ina, all of a sudden, eBay sellers are adding sales tax to sales. This past week weekend, I did a buy it now to a seller in Arizona and another in New York State that are both added that both added a line item of sales tax. Neither of the item was large was a large vendor who could have <clears throat> uh, had open operations in my state. So then I want you to see the link to a collector's forum. Now you go, I clicked it on and it'll talk about different things there. And you could click it on yourself. It's an active hyperlink uh, if you want to check it out for yourself. And then if you go on to reading some of the um, comments here, I'm not going to read all of them because, like I said, again, this will take some time. I'll just read this one over here. It says eBay recent, now this is again, now it's going back in 2017. eBay's recent and never ending fee hikes could be a motivator for some sellers to fraudulently collect sales tax as a way to bring in a new revenue to offset increase in they, they fa increases they face. Okay, sales tax does not appear to buyers until they have checked out, as such as sellers could use sales tax as a way to increase revenue without raising the prices and, bring, and being demoted in search. Given many ways eBay is less than honest with their sellers, it would not be at all surprising to find a small subset of sellers who will not think twice about resorting to collecting sales tax and never reporting the revenues. Well, again, this is by the, this is up to the person. Okay, if, if a person wants to go that route, that is at your own discretion. Okay, now, uh, from what I understand, this sales tax it will begin. I think over here. I'm going to close out this way so I don't confuse. Let me close this one out and this one here. Uh, if you want to check into the story, just type in there, um, do a Google search, but this is on www.ecommercebytes, one word, dot com. Or if you want, uh, just type in buy you think sales tax on eBay is a scam, and you can just type it that way. Do a Google search if you can't find it this way. I'm going to bump out of this one here, and I'm going to go to this window, another one from ecommercebytes. Okay, now this one here. 
came out September 14th, 2018. Okay, came out this year, not last year. eBay will collect sales tax in three states next year. Okay, now here we go. This is why it gets a little confusing, folks, because I just showed you ones that showed you 2017, 2018, now you got 2019. It says eBay notified its sellers, uh, notified sellers it will begin collecting sales tax on transactions made to buyers located in three states, Washington, Pennsylvania, and Oklahoma, but not until 2019. So, again, the question is, if you're making sales in these three states now, does a person charge them now ahead of time or you just wait until 2019 i don't know i don't really i haven't really recall getting any of these uh states i'd have to look through my files i don't recall but it doesn't according to this it's not going to take effect until 2019 which is not far off okay um it goes on to say ebay lacks uh, legs behind amazon and etsy which which began collecting and remitting uh, washington sales tax <clears throat> For the third-party sellers on January 1st, 2018, and also began collecting uh, transactions uh, for transaction in Pennsylvania and Oklahoma this year. eBay didn't give a reason why it is not already collecting sales tax on these tra on transactions in those states under the fit under the marketplace facilitated laws, but presumably it's because unlike Amazon and Etsy, buyers don't pay eBay. Buyers don't pay eBay. Okay, they pay the seller. Okay, but that's changing as about as eBay rolls out new managed payments. Okay, it's going to be very interesting. I'll be honest with you, folks. eBay said sellers cannot opt opt out of selling items into Washington, Pennsylvania, and Oklahoma. Okay, there are no opt outs for selling items in the states listed above or out of eBay automatically collecting sales tax uh, on items shipped. To those states above the implication was uh, that sellers might wish to avoid dealing with those buyers in those states although many sellers actually favor the marketplace handling of sales tax on their behalf especially if they sell for those who sell or yeah exclusively on marketplaces okay so here it goes on here dates marketplaces began complying with the state marketplace facilitator laws it was washington Pennsylvania and Oklahoma, Etsy started in January, Amazon started in January, and eBay is going to be in January 2019. Okay? These are the dates for Etsy is January, April, and uh, August. And I'll get to see over there. And Amazon started in the same thing uh, January, April, and July. And eBay is starting as, or whatever it's going to take place, January of 2019 and July of 2019 for those three states. Okay? Um, let me read a little over here. I'm not going to read all of this here because it'll be too long. eBay also offered this advice to sellers in Thursday's post. Prior to these dates, please continue to collect and remit tax in these states and comply with other applicable requirements they impose. But keep in mind, it may be better off, uh, it may be better to let sellers to determine if they are obligated to collect sales, uh, collect any stale, state sales tax. See, so, you know, this is what I'm referring to right now. Um, it could be, it could all be, it could all be something that, that it could be confusing at times. You know, they're telling you, they're telling you that, you know, at the same time, it's going to begin at this certain time, you know, certain date, and then they're telling you, eBay's telling you to collect, start collecting. Now, I have to look back at my photos. I don't recall doing business in these states. I don't recall. If I did, I have to, like I said, look in. And again, uh, because, and I don't know, now I have right now on, on my eBay listings to collect sales tax right now in New York. So, you know, when a person, when a buyer buys in New York, they're collecting, you know, they're, uh, I'm collecting sales tax for the New York purchases. Now, I don't remember seeing anything over here with my regards to this. So this is something we got to look into. That's what I said, folks. You know, this stuff can be very confusing. And if we don't follow suit with it, you know, follow through with this here, you know, we could be heading for <laughs> a tax compliant uh, problem, you know. So we got to make sure we're doing the right thing here, folks.
That's why I'm bringing this to our attention because, look, tax time, you might say, yeah, but that's, uh, that's months away. Believe me, the way the months are flying, it'll be here before you know it, okay? So th this, this video, like I said again, is to prep us. Let us get, you know, get into the move, you know, the groove here and start looking into this very seriously because, you know, when tax time comes around and you're, you're going to be, you know, be wishing you got, you got ahead of, you know, you got into it a lot quicker, a lot sooner than later. You know, so that's why I'm doing this video to help us out, help you out, help me out. <laughs> All right. Um, this story again. Uh, now, this is the latest stuff they're talking about. All right. Now, what is this here? Let me just see something really quick here. What if eBay held an improvement? All right. Sometimes I like to read the latest up here, folks. You see, for October 24th, which is today. All right. Um, I'll click that on later on. I'm going to bump out of here. I'm going to close this one out. This is uh, ecommercebytes.com is the one store you're looking for. And if you're unsure, if you can't find it that way, just type in eBay will collect sales tax in three states next year, and it'll bring you up this story, hopefully. Okay? So let me bump out of here. Um, let's go to this one here. This is from esellercafe.com. Okay? eBay is all prepared to collect sales tax for sellers. Now, this came out, this was published uh, July 19th, 2018. Like I said, you could see they're prepping up for this here a while back, months back. So it's not like, you know, this should be a shock. To those who don't know, if you are a new eBay seller, then you might want to, you know, look into this here. And also, <laughs> that's to throw a little segue out there. If you want to be more informed on, on, on reselling and stuff like that, you might want to also subscribe to my channel, The Reseller News. Uh, I do The Reseller News and also The Reseller News Weekends. So uh, if you want to be on top of things, you might want to subscribe to my channel to get more information like this. Uh, when, I get it, when, I, when it becomes readily available to me, I'll make it readily available to you guys out there and to all my subscribers, which is greatly appreciated. I do appreciate you subscribing to me. But anyway... <clears throat> Um, this story, like I said, came out July 19, 2018, and uh, the title is, again, eBay is already prepared to collect sales tax for sellers, for sellers, okay, which is a good thing. It says, on Wednesday, eBay released, a 2018, uh, it released its 2018 Q2 earnings. During the earnings call with Wall Street analyst eBay CEO Devin Wenig discussed a recent decision by the U.S. Supreme Court in South Dakota versus Wayfair that effectively changed the way out-of-state or remote sellers may have to collect and report sales tax. Now, this is an act of hyperlinky. You can click it on. You can read more. Okay, Supreme Court decision on sales tax, but what does it mean? Okay, now, I'm not going to read this whole story. I'm not going to click this on because it'll bump me to another website. It says over here, Wenick stated that eBay believes... The $100,000 threshold in South Dakota's <clears throat> law requires remote sellers to reach before merchants must collect and report sales tax is far too low for most populous states. <laughs> anyway, he did say internal data shows that over 80% of eBay sellers who would not be affected by the sales tax ruling even even if the $100,000 threshold becomes the most common standard threshold used by other states. Okay, so you see what he's saying here? <clears throat> it says, well, let me just read it one more time. He did say that internal data shows that over 80% of eBay sellers would not be affected by sales tax ruling, even if the $100,000 threshold becomes the most common standard threshold used by other states i'm not saying this this is what he's saying let me just get a little swig of water here um then it goes on to say here uh however when it did, did did not make a mention of the other metric uh south dakota used to establish nexus or the requirement by remote sellers to collect and remit sales tax okay again now, this is off of eSellerCafe.com. If you want to read the story, if you can't find it, just type in eBay. Is re just remember this title and just do a Google search on it. It'll bring you right to this page if you can't find it on eSellerCafe. Uh, I'm not going to read the whole thing, folks. 
<laughs> now you that, I got kind of a little cough here, so I'd be, I'm straining myself just doing this video, but I want to get the news out to you guys, all right? And then you can read a little more about it, all right? Um, it's a topic that I think it should be brought into play, you know? It, 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 we, got, we can't just push it off. Now, this one here, <coughs> it says over here, now this is from the eBay community. I think I got two, I think these all might be from eBay. <coughs> Let me see. I think this is um, yeah, from the eBay community, state sales tax. I think I got it twice. Let me see. Yes, I do. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. Um, this came out, uh, let's see, over here, 8 20, 2018. Uh, I know it's a couple months old, <clears throat> but it's still good. Hello, all my state. Oh, hello. Oh, it says over here. Hello, all. The state of Missouri will require online sellers to collect. Or well, Michigan, whatever that is there. I'm sorry, guys. Um, to collect sales tax starting October 1st, 2018. I already collected sales tax for the MI sales tax. My question is, how is eBay going to handle all different states' sales taxes? Does anyone know? Um, of course, what I understood from Wenick, what he read, read, read that one, the last one there, that it was also, also mentioned in another thing he did. Um, I think it was a video he did that something to the effect that they will set something up in place uh ebay will do something where they'll collect the taxes but you're going to be responsible for submitting those taxes to the proper jurisdictions and estates okay that's why i understand it um let me see here it says over here uh after being on ebay for a time uh, for a time i can guarantee it will be a disaster we will see well, we'll see what when it happens from what i hear each state will have its own rules and some states are against it but uh but time will tell i'm not going to get into reading all this here you can go to the ebay community and just type in state sales tax or do a google search on state sales tax and it'll probably bring you up to this one here but you know it's funny i'm going to bump out of the screen here when you go to here and you type in uh when do actual sales uh, start collecting sales tax uh, it's all different things here you know, you could read it over here. That's why I did in the Google search. As you can see, I get the information from. Uh, this is from East Seller Cafe. That's why I just got. It says, do you need to collect sales tax on eBay? State sales tax and the eBay seller most charge sales tax on goods sold within the state. If you sell goods on eBay or the internet and ship them to the someone that's state, uh, you have to collect and charge for buyer uh, sales tax uh, and pay that tax in your state. Yeah, it, it goes on. If you read this here, then there's another one over here. Uh, how much can you make on eBay for paying tax? Now, uh, you know, here's the thing. This is a funny. This is a funny one. I've read this before, once before. If you make more than twenty thousand dollars in gross sales, or have two hundred two hundred or more transactions on eBay, you should receive a 1099-K form reporting this to the IRS. Uh, let me let me put it this way: If you want to be safe when it comes to things of this nature. If you are, and this is me, again, I am not a tax you know, person that knows all about the taxes, but I'll tell you this much. If I was making $20,000 in gross sales, okay, from eBay, all right, and, you know, and, or I was under the threshold, let's say I made only 10. If you want to stay in a safe zone, you would definitely put that as other income, okay? If you're working, let's say you're working, you got a full-time job, and you're doing eBay as a hobby or a part-time business, and you're making 10000 just, just put it on the form, folks, as other income, or hobby income, whatever. Or we'll let your CPA know, well, I made this ten thousand, this extra $10,000 selling on eBay. Do the right thing, and you won't have no problems. If you're going to, like, you know, do it other ways, that, that's totally up to you. I, that's how I would do it. That's how I am doing it. I'm not, you know, I don't have a full-time job right now because I'm doing eBay full-time, which is nothing to write home about. But, you know, that's, the, that's how I would handle it, okay? Um... Regardless, you know, whether you make a five thousand, ten thousand, it, it's it's other income and it should be reported to the IRS, plain and simple. You know, if you want to do the right thing, that's what I would do. Uh, I, I don't think you need to you know, you know, a CPA to tell you that there. Because it's going on this other income. You know? Of course then you got your itemization and all that stuff there. You're gonna write off your certain things and you know, your supplies and so on and so forth. So it may bring the tax burden down a little. But I'm just saying to do the right thing. That's how I would do it. But that's just me. Um I'm going to bump out of here, <clears throat> and I'm going to leave my glasses on here because um, I just want to go over some stuff. I wrote some notes over here really quick. Let me get out of here. 
Yeah, I keep a loose leaf next to me. <clears throat> I was following a, a, a reseller early on uh, YouTube, and you know, I was trying to jot down some information and stuff. And um, you know, I like to just share some of the stuff I have. With you know, I I, I like doing these videos, folks, for the simple reasons I want to help people out. Uh, you know, or, as I said earlier. And not only am I helping you out, I'm helping myself out too, because we're both learning from this here. Well, hopefully, get a takeaway from it. Um, and that was to, that was the title. That's going to be the title on uh, today, anyway. Well, unless I change it, but it's going to be collecting sales tax on eBay. Um, I wrote over here. Go over the website. You know, collecting about collecting sales tax. Talked about the nexus. Uh, that I'm a New York resident, and um, when I collect sales tax in my state. Plain and simple, it's not rocket scientists. You know, I, I collect the sales tax here and I, I send it off to the New York Department of Taxation and Finance. Um, right now on eBay, I have it checked off that any sales come in from New York, it's the sales tax included within the sale, within that sale. Um, I'm just trying to see if there's anything else. Oh, and I wrote in there uh, in regards to, um, I think I, I expressed it earlier. That if a buyer, let's say I'm selling a vintage item, and the item is let's say $100 for the item, and um, the tax is 10 bucks on it, you may get a, a potential buyer that that may be interested in your item. But then I know there's variables with that, and I'm going to get to that in a second. But you might get a buyer that might say, you know what, I seen it cheaper in Pennsylvania, I seen it cheaper better in uh, you know, cheaper in Connecticut, or I can get it without, you know, let's say let's say. They're doing it before this implemented, you know, this tax thing is full in full operation. They can say, well, if I go buy it in Pennsylvania, I could save ten dollars in Texas, you know, rather than buying it here. I'm talking about a New York buyer. I'm not talking about, you know, I'm talking about a buyer that's based in New York. You know, rather than buying from me, who sells in New York, who does the business here in New York, he could save money. You know, I could lose a sale because of that because he can go to another state that doesn't charge sales tax at this time. And he can save himself 10 bucks because, you know, he's still got to pay for the shipping unless they offer free shipping. Then he's getting a real super good deal. He's not paying sales tax and he's getting free shipping. So, you know, so it could work out that way. And I think personally, uh, I have to follow suit with that because and I and I believe that because for a simple reason, folks, I would do that. I'm being upfront and honest. I would. I live in New York. I sell in New York. My business is here, right? This is my nexus state, right? Um, you know, that's how I would do it. You know, until this gets in full effect. So I'm not saying that's what's causing a lag in sales. Uh, that you know, maybe certain, maybe certain people are buying, maybe they're not. Uh, it could be, it could not be. I don't know. There's a lot of variables for it. But then again, here's the other thing I'm saying. Let's say you get a buyer that doesn't do all the research. He goes and checks with a couple of sellers, and he sees that maybe the other ones that they're selling, they're offering. All right, yeah, there's no sales tax. There, let's just say, and there's no, you know, and. Um, you know, the, the guys offer free shipping, but that particular item might be in very bad shape. So you might get the, you know, I might get the buyer then on that term, if you're thinking of that along that line, saying, hey, you know what? I'm better off buying in my own state. It's going to get shipped to me within a couple of days. Yeah, I'm going to pay a little more in sales tax, but I'm getting a better item. His, this guy's item is 10 times better than the other two, or the other three. You know, I mean, we're all going to do our research when it comes to selling, plain and, plain and simple. But, um, you know, that's why I think how that could affect your sales. And the other thing I just wrote over here, uh, uh, let's see here, locations. Yeah, and then that's the other thing too. Uh, if you hire somebody, let's say you do, from what the seller was saying, this other person was saying that if you do business with, let's say Amazon, and you send your merchandise to FBA, and let's say they're located in California, I believe if it's getting shipped and sold out of that state, you're gonna pay for that. Okay, that's where I think you would come into or if you're hiring a personal assistant that lives in another state, you know, you're going to have to, and, and let's say they're doing the shipment for you or whatever, you're going to have to pay for that. That's the way I, that's the way I think I understand it. Um, yeah, I'm looking, I'm just looking at my notes here because I was trying to write down the stuff as a person was talking about it. Uh, but the other thing is, the other thing is um, with the thresholds. Now, again, when this gets into full operation, which you can see some of it's already in place, um, you know, if you fall under that threshold, are you still required to pay taxes? Or do you just go about your business and don't worry about it? I don't know. These are things 
that we need to talk to our, well, I can't, I don't have a CPA, but if you out there can afford it and you want to talk to somebody, I can get probably help from other people. Um, I got friends that do know a little more about the tax laws than I do. I could talk to maybe people like that and get some information on it or do my own research or basically contact somebody that may be more, uh, you know, affluent in this type of, in this area, you know, and see what they have to say. Uh, it, the, the way, now, that's the thing. If you don't, if you're under the threshold, do you still pay taxes? You know, my guess would be you would still pay taxes. I don't know. That, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's, a, it's a gray area there, you know. If you're under the threshold, do you not pay taxes and you just go about your business? Or, well, we definitely know if you're over the threshold, you definitely have to pay taxes. That, that's a, that's a no-brainer. But that's what I'm trying to figure out, you know. Uh, to me, the way I would assume it to be is if you're under the threshold, you wouldn't. But at the same time, the flip side to it is if you're making sales in that state, I would think whether you're under the threshold or not, I would think they would still want that sales tax. These are questions you got to ask your CPA or somebody that's influent that, that knows the tax laws. Okay, me, I'm going to do more research on, but I'm just throwing this out there to you guys out there. I'm sharing this information with you. And I hope you get a takeaway from it. I hope to some point it does help, um, you know, that you can get some information. And you know what? I would really appreciate that if you do have pretty much concrete evidence, or not evidence, but concrete evidence, uh, you know, good solid information from, let's say you did have a CPA you could talk to, or maybe. Somebody that's a follower on here, a subscriber on here, maybe you know, very fluent with the uh, tax laws, or maybe maybe a, a, an accountant or a CPA that knows about this stuff. If you could share it with us, share it with me and the rest of the YouTube people and you know YouTube community, that would be great. I'd really appreciate it because I need to know this stuff too, you know. But I'm doing my own research. I mean, I'm, I'm looking up stuff there and I'm I'm trying to interpret the way, you know, it, it's presented to me, so to speak. You know, we could say things and you, it's like a person trying to teach you something in a foreign language and you don't understand them you know <laughs> i'm not trying to be funny but i'm being i'm trying, trying to be upfront. you know uh i'm not you know uh what do you call it diverse in all these different areas okay that's why when i do the reseller news um, i do share the information like that and i always tell you the websites and the urls as far as where i'm getting the information because I don't want to just come on to YouTube, as I said in many other videos, and just start throwing stuff out there just to make a, a, a you know a video. Uh, that's not what I'm all about, and so that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, whenever you see me talk about certain things, or you know, you see me uh, giving you websites or URLs, I always try to have that information to back me up because I, folks, honestly, I don't want you to get the impression like, oh, this guy just makes stuff up as he goes along. You know, <laughs> I'm not like that. I don't do stuff like that. That's crazy. I would never do anything like that. But um, I hope you guys get a takeaway from it. And if you do, drop a comment below. Let me know if it helped. Um, if you didn't get a takeaway from it, I apologize. I'm only trying to do the best. I'm just trying to share the information with you guys out there. I'm hoping you know, it can be some or just give you a little insight as, as far as like what, what is going on or what's taking place or what is about to take place. Um, so keep that in mind, folks. Um, you know, I really hope it helps out somewhat. But uh, I just want to say thank you again for taking the time out of your busy day to check out my video. And uh, if you do like the information I put out, or you like the content I put out here, please subscribe to my channel. Um, if you got anything from it, give it a thumbs up. And most, and most of all, folks, if you want to be updated on the videos I produce when I come out with new content, you got to hit that bell, the little bell notification uh, icon there. And uh, when I put out new videos, you will be, you know, um, updated, you know. Um, I do these, like I said, I do the reseller news um, to, you know, help, inspire, and share with people. Try to give you good tips on there. Sometimes I come out with money-saving tips. And uh, it's basically, it's, 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 an inform it's supposed to be an informative YouTube channel uh, to help people like you and myself out in this area. Uh, we are resellers in most cases. Uh, I think that's probably why you hit the channel. Or maybe you might just be a person just wanting to check me out and see what I'm all about, you know. And that's fine too. But again, if you do like my channel, <laughs> please subscribe. And I just want to say in closing, um, what my goals are for this year, uh, for the remainder of the year, if all possible, with your help I did in my other video, my other reseller news, uh, I'm trying to, uh, I would like to, my own goal right now is to, produce or create a thousand videos by year's end and I would really hope my most important thing is I would really hope that I can obtain or gain at least a thousand subscribers uh, so this channel can be monetized 
And when it becomes monetized, um, you know, it'll help out. It'll give me more of incentive to keep producing more videos. Uh, you know, right now it's not. I'm under that. I'm under that. I'm under that threshold on the YouTube's threshold. I did the 4,000 over 4,000 hours of watch time, which is no problem. But it's just the subscribers, folks. It's so hard to get subscribers, and uh, that's the other thing I just want to say. And being we're talking about subscribers, if there's anything you want to you know, talk about, um, please share it with me. You know, if you want to hear me talk about different topics or you got different interests, let me know. I'd rather you rather you'd let me know before you unsubscribe. And if you are thinking about unsubscribing from my channel, can you just tell me why? I would like to know. You know, is it the content I'm putting out? Uh, do I talk about it? Are the subjects that I'm, I'm bringing into play uh, have no interest to you? Have no bearing and stuff like that? Um, if they are, if that is the case, then uh, please let me know. Maybe I could change it around. Uh, I would like to keep the subscribers I have and like to have a build a big subscriber base. I'd love to have millions of subscribers if possible. Uh, because then if I had that many, well, even with the ones I have now, don't get me wrong, I appreciate the ones I have, but but if I have a big subscriber base like that, I know I'm doing something right. And I know, you know when you have big numbers like that and people are subscribing to your channel, hey, that can mean one thing. They like the content you're putting out. And uh, I hope to be putting out, putting out good content out there and uh, for you guys to keep coming back for more and more information. I would like to keep this kind of like um, an open forum where they'll, not only am I going to discuss about reselling and you know, talk about online selling and e-commerce, I like to talk about other things as well. You know, maybe talk a little about digital photography or maybe like do like a reality thing type of, you know, maybe I did something today that I might want to share. You might have went to the park and, you know, uh, showed you some, some event going on in my local park or whatever. You know, do something different. You know, be off candid, you know, just be, do something totally out of the out of the norm. But it'd be of good, it'd be all clean, good, clean gesture. Believe me, I, um, like I said before in my other videos, I don't discuss religion and politics um, and I don't use profanity on here. Uh, it's not that type of channel. It's a kid safe channel. Uh, meaning you could you could be watching me in your living room, kitchen or whatever. And if you have kids running here, you don't have to worry about me coming out and using profanity. That's not the way I roll with this, uh, this uh, YouTube channel. I never have and I don't plan to. Um, and that's the way it's going to stay. And I also call it the the, uh, the his initiative, which is to help inspire and share. That's what my channel is all about. I want to you know try to help people out, you know, inspire them and in sharing information that may be useful to you, you know. So uh, I really do appreciate you taking the time again, and thank you so much for for all the new subscribers. It is really greatly appreciated. And again, um, if you know anybody that may want to be interested in this here, please like, comment, and share. And uh, and so next time. I'm Rich Bassini for the Reseller News. Today is October 24th, 2018. I'm wishing you all the best in your sales. Have a great day. Until next time, bye-bye now.